Future Jobs is made possible by BNY Mellon of Southwestern Pennsylvania and with these major funders. And these generous supporters. Thank you. I am always looking for someone that has a positive attitude. I think being able to relate to somebody or empathize with their situation is really important. Folks have to be team players. Most of us are familiar with the importance of technical skills, which would be the specific knowledge and abilities needed to succeed in a particular job. There's not as much focus on soft skills, which would be the interpersonal skills and personality traits that you really need to work well with others. I wouldn't probably be in college right now, honestly. I mean, I'm smart, but like you can't get far without communication. In AI, some of the skills that are most important are still innovation and creativity. We're from the Boys and Girls Club. We're here to present to you about flowers. I'm not a huge fan of the word soft skills. I think it brings a, a negative connotation that they're easy, that they are sometimes maybe not as valued as technical or hard skills. I prefer to use terms like success skills or social intelligence. We can make our best guesses about what kind of technical skills will be relevant in the job market of the future, but the truth is no one knows. What will be relevant is your adaptability and your problem solving skills and your critical thinking. If you're able to work on those skills now, you'll be able to adapt to whatever the job market throws at you. Many individuals will point to the mid-60s, mid to late 60s. The United States Army, they're usually given credit for coming up with the term soft skills. The Army was trying to identify what are skills that they needed in future leaders. This is not about driving a tank or shooting a sniper rifle or repairing a piece of machinery. This was all about skills that were needed to lead, to motivate, to organize. I think soft skills are the qualities that you kind of bring to the table to help you accomplish something. So that could be getting a job, uh, working on a team. I believe in a time where we're getting used to technology and technology taking over certain jobs that I think that it's important that those interpersonal skills are still being taught to people. I would think about, um, you know, good posture, eye contact, greeting people, understanding how to shake hands, just those kind of etiquette things that sometimes we kind of take for granted. Some of the ones that we use every day are things like collaboration and communication. Some of the ones that are more part of the tech industry or part of workforce are things like innovation and flexibility, motivation. I always defer to the World Economic Forum. Uh, in 2020, they put out a list of 10 skills that were needed for the future workforce. Things like flexibility and adaptability. You'll see complex problem solving. You'll see communication, uh, interpersonal, being able to relate, influence others. Other skills such as being a lifelong learner, the ability to continually adapt and improve. teaching hard skills today probably but most likely will change in the future so we need to teach soft skills that can be timeless like showing up to work on time how to get along with colleagues looking people in the eyes and, and giving them a handshake and saying hello to them those skills today are timeless hard skills are not timeless they're here today they're gone tomorrow so if we teach this hard skill today it will change 5 10 15 years from now but those soft skills of being dependable, having a good work ethic, those are timeless and will never change.
the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in a lot of people being isolated, especially if they don't live with others. That cut down on the amounts of interpersonal communication and face-to-face -face interactions with others that they had. With the advent of technology, we've been able to expand our global knowledge of interacting with individuals across the globe and not just with individuals who are in an office right next door. A drawback would be the communication. Defaulting to a text when a live either phone or in-person conversation is warranted, especially when delivering difficult news or very nuanced conversations. I do believe that one of the most important soft skills is communication. Coming off of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've all been at home and we have lost some of those skills. We haven't been able to connect with each other how we usually are. Teaching middle school, I do feel it's really important to teach soft skills. These students are addicted to their cell phones and video games and they know skills that I have no idea about. But it's really important to teach them how to be a human being, work with others, take the leadership position when needed, and be able to be a team player. I think educators are being a little bit more strategic about how they're embedding those skills into everyday curriculum. And so you see a lot of the more uh, hands-on learning, the problem-based learning, that's getting students to talk more about things and to elicit conversations around how you can be better at those things. Technology really helps expand knowledge and experiences, but we want to teach the middle school students how to be able to communicate and work with others in person as well. It's a struggle to convince 18 to 22 year olds that communication is as important as coding, that conflict negotiation is as important as analytical skills. So has anyone heard any horror stories about like any of your friends not getting a job because of what they wore? There's a lot of connection to what skills are necessary to be successful in life period. You know, to be community ready and to be prepared for a job, whether you're working at, you know, retail or fast food. Being nice to one another and you know, knowing how to work in a team, those are all different things that I believe are, are super important. You know, whether you're a 15-year-old you know, entering the 10th grade or you know, a 25-year-old that's coming out of college. Hello, and welcome to this installment of the Future Grind podcast. I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and today we're going to continue to discuss how the future of science and technology are going to impact your life. I'm the host and producer of the Future Grind podcast, which explores the future of science and technology, particularly about how it's going to impact human society going forward. Historically, people got ahead by hyper-specializing. They learn all they could about one thing, they dive into that and reach the top of their field. That's a gamble going forward now because you're not sure if what you end up specializing in is going to be relevant. Our school system and university system today mainly focuses on teaching technical skills. And I feel like there's a misconception that a lot of people have that if they're not born with soft skills, these things like effective communication and leadership skills, they'll never have them. And I completely disagree with that. You can learn these skills. You can practice these skills. My name is Don DeRay, and I'm the president and CEO of Consensus Technologies. We specialize in identity and access management, cybersecurity, and hosting. Soft skills are the skills that we want to teach our employees that are above and beyond the technical things that they need to know to perform their jobs, like being accountable and showing up on time. We act as a team, and we are humbly confident. I was taught early on in my career not uh, to be the complete package. You had to have the technical knowledge to be able to do your job, but you also needed to be able to communicate with people and have those soft skills. When we're interviewing somebody for the first time, we always ask the same first question. What do you know about consensus? So we want them to do that research and take a look at our company understand what we do to try to make sure that they know what they're getting into. 
When we take a look at two candidates, if they have the same set of skills, but they may have different technical skills or soft skills, we're going to take a look at which one's going to have the capacity to learn more and to grow. My name is Phil Light. Somewhere along the way, I started to become an engineer and eventually a programmer. My role here is to be a program manager. Remember how many people are not like us in the programming industry. And so it's really, really important for us to remember that people do have very diverse backgrounds in every different way. I think it's important for everyone to have good communication and problem solving skills. I say soft skills are skills that you learn through experience and life that helps you network, communicate, and become interpersonal with not only your customers or whatever job you're doing, but with society as a whole. So when you apply for a job, what's on your resume, what's likely to get you an interview, is going to be your technical skills. They look out for that part of the process. But once you get into the interview, what's going to get you that job is going to be your soft skills. It's going to be how that you show them you interact with others, how you communicate, how you work, and how you learn. And this means working on your problem solving and your critical thinking skills and learning how to learn. Amco is a steel manufacturing company that makes forge and cast rolls, as well as FEP, which stands for Forged Engineer Products, for the oil and gas industry. Our core business is the, the roll business, where we make work rolls and backup rolls for other manufacturers. Our headquarters is here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in Carnegie. I am involved in the hiring process with the initial resume review. Whenever you apply to a job, I will get the resumes across in our system, our HR system, and I will review those resumes. If we're talking about the union workers that are working in the plants, we're looking for an array of skills, whether people are good with their hands and they've done work in a similar environment, like a manufacturing environment, or in our case, a steel making plant. But at the same time, those folks have to be team players, they have to be someone that's good communicators, they have to be someone that is really trainable. I think I was very personable during my interview, showing my personality through, making sure that they understand that I do have the technical skills that are needed for the position, but also I have the personality that would fit in with the company. I always look to see what kind of extracurriculars the people do. If people are Boy Scouts and they've made Eagle Scout, that's, that's a really cool thing. And if people have volunteer experiences, that's, that's a great thing. Myself, personally, I volunteer with Special Olympics and I, it's something that I've seen on some other people's resumes and it's an immediate connection with that person. If two people come in and they have the same exact technical background, same education, same upbringing, everything like that as far as their, their actual technical skills, and there is one person that is a much better soft-skilled person, they're, they're much more engaged, they're much more friendly seeming, they're much more openly communicating with me, that person is almost always gonna get the job. So I originally applied to the online application for the safety specialist position, but I also had network connections. I'm very big into being on LinkedIn and connecting with certain people within companies. And even if you don't know someone that works for that company, I mean, you could reach out and see if you have a similar connection with them. any job, you need to be able to adapt and kind of change with the environment of how the business is doing, how things are working with the outside world. In the future, you're probably looking at more and more advanced technologies, and this will allow people to advance their own skill set 
and make sure that they stay up with those times so that they're not out of a job. My name is Nicole McLean and I'm the general manager of two cafes in the Pittsburgh area. Monetera Cafe Swickley and Monetera Cafe Mount Lebanon. I've been in the service industry for 10 years. My father started a bread bakery 20 years ago, so all throughout high school I was working in the customer service business. I did all aspects of it. I packed bread, I answered phones, I delivered bread to customers. I graduated high school, then went to college, graduated college, and as soon as I graduated I said, Dad, I want to come work for you. You definitely have to have patience. I think you have to have understanding of other people's lives because a lot of people have things going on all the time and you need to build good relationships with your staff so they want to be there and they're loyal and they become passionate about what they're doing because you're passionate about your own business. I am always looking for someone that has a positive attitude because I feel like that affects everybody else that they're around. Working for a family business is a lot different than working in corporate America. So someone that understands things day to day are gonna be a little bit different. We definitely want someone that will be reliable and show up on time. Because we are in the service industry and you know we're short staffed, we have been the last few years. If someone is an hour late, it could throw us off for the entire day. When I came into the role as being a manager, I didn't necessarily think soft skills would be the most important factor in hiring staff. I thought more experience would be better, but now I'm realizing that soft skills is probably the most important because you can teach somebody anything, but that's really hard to teach. In regards to soft skills, in my own personal ones, I think my top three are time management, decisiveness, and being able to work under pressure. Being that I have three kids and I run two businesses, I really have to learn to manage my time and I have to make decisions quickly, so I feel like I've become very decisive. <laughs> We're going to talk about interview. What is an interview? Interview is like that first impression. It's an opportunity to introduce yourself and to make a first impression. And doing a soft skills uh, workshop with students here at the Penn State Readiness Institute. We're going to spend some time here doing some mock interviews and understanding is sometimes you do have to interview through Zoom or through another medium. However, it's about your mindset whenever you're interviewing. You know, you don't want to be in the interview thing of like, man, can they see my sweatpants? We have real professionals come in, work with students on mock interviews, teach them about financial literacy skills. We have them come in and teach them what it's like to set up your own business, the steps to do those type of skills they need to be successful no matter what they want to do in life. I do believe that children started learning soft skills at a very young age. I just think that they don't know that they're actually learning those soft skills. So do you know how long that we've had this Summer Readiness Institute? For one year. So As a soft skill, I think that people mostly need kindness. I, I know that that might not come off as a traditional soft skill, but it's something that we've been missing after the pandemic and we've gone through a very trying and divisive time. We do not have any time for questions today, but I appreciate your time, and we will be getting back to you shortly, okay? Excellent. Thanks so much. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. I'm a talker. I love people. I love community. I love talking to people. I think I come off pretty confident in just the way that I speak, thanks to my mom. And I think when you use soft skills in like different scenarios, like the right ones, they can come off very professional to adults, even though I'm only 17. And sometimes they might think I'm older, and I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. <laughs> It'll kind of help you build a connection with adults. I'm a good leader. I'm also an extremely good communicator. And I like to talk a lot. Have you given any feedback of how this program could improve? Uh, I have not yet. Being adaptable is my like most important soft skill to me. Being a creative thinker and just like dependable. Those are definitely my three main 
soft skills that I feel like are the most important to have. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Have a good day. We are at the Estelle Boys and Girls Club at the Artificial Intelligence Pathways Institute camp. And this is a three-week program where kids get to come and learn about artificial intelligence, get to learn different skills about presenting the different parts and concepts in AI, and at the end, they get to come up with a project and present it. Okay, I'm gonna go first. So when we present, we're gonna present whatever comes up on the screen. We're gonna talk about it. Our students are learning to be flexible and to be learners. I think being someone who is continually learning who understands that things are changing rapidly and that not everyone knows everything. So that's something we do in all of our programs across Boys and Girls Clubs of Western Pennsylvania's STEM program. We really want to teach that failure is part of the process. The process of us learning these things is that some of us it comes innately to. And one of our young men doing the presentation was really able to engage. He's a natural performer. Who wins this presentation? It's probably who's best at telling a story. So tell me there are other students who might be brilliant and engaged students, but that they have trouble really engaging an audience or being louder. Uh, one of my feedback is you two are brilliant. Every time I talk to you, you are brilliant. But no one's gonna hear your brilliance if you don't speak up. I did this program summer of 2019. Each week we would have a game where we would come up with something random to talk about and then we would discuss it for one minute and make sure we were keeping good eye contact with our peers, being loud and being focused and that helped with my presentation skills. And we also built our team building skills and teamwork because we'd have to work with each other on our projects and keep each other accountable. I just love to talk and I love talking to other people so it's like a second like second home to me to present so I just find it easy. That's actually a good one. Polluted water. But I do understand how that could feel like you like there's everybody staring at you and like you just have all this pressure to like do good. You don't want to act like mess up or anything. So it's probably hard. I'm also an extrovert. I do love to talk a lot but then when you're up in front of a group of people for me I'm not I'm a bit shaky on it, it may not be the best but I'm still getting it done I don't like going solo really I love working in groups I think it fits me best because then you get to really figure out who you're working with in a sense and you basically get to know people's skills my collaboration skills I would say definitely improved while I was here Collaboration and communication, I would say that is extremely important, um, especially in like for my future. Where I am in my internship, I know that it's really important to be able to communicate effectively with those that you work around and in the work environment. I work with the Neighborhood Learning Alliance. I'm a college success coach. NLA works with students, underprivileged students, normally students of color, and just gives them different opportunities in education, in career exploration, and mentoring. One of the first things we did when we first started the NLA program, so they have like a training, it's about two weeks with Partner for Work, and they teach us how to compose emails, how to professionally dress. I feel like through learning soft skills, I most definitely learned a few better ways to talk to teachers. We show them their leadership potential. We definitely do teamwork and team building. We've had students, some amazing students, that because of this, when they write their essays for scholarships or an essay just to get into college, they talk about this experience. And I think that pushes them over the top. My name is Juan Perez. I'm the Senior Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Western Pennsylvania. We're trying to open up opportunities for our young people and let them see the opportunities that are out there for them. 
Yeah, you want to be innovative and creative and come Not up everybody's with it. gonna be an artificial intelligence programmer. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's gonna go into coding, but the leadership skills, communication, problem solving, those are skills that they can take with them anywhere they go. Historically, a lot of our young people come from communities that were at a disadvantage, you know, through education, through opportunities, access for them to programs. So we want to eliminate all of those barriers. We have a wonderful program called CareerWorks, and they go through all of those skills with our young people. How to create a cover letter, how to do a resume, how to go to an interview, questions to even ask the interviewer, you know, when the interview is done. And these are skills that I see adults don't even have in these days. I've seen it happen where they take these skills and bring them back and teach them to their parents, their grandparents, and say, hey, this is what I learned. Can I explain? So yeah, I want you to explain that because that's I think any student in our society today are faced with many disadvantages. So I think that it's not just this focus on students of color, but that is a big part of our program. So I think what we do is we bring all these students together and we let them see that you, you all have so much in common. They're always learning from each other, which I think is great. And while you absolutely need the technical skills for any specific job you want to do, those skills are changing, and that knowledge might not be relevant in a few years. Soft skills are essential skills that people need when they're working with other people and working with each other. You want to leave a good impression. You should always have like a deep thinking mindset. For me, I feel like the biggest thing I see is asking for help. Any success that you're going to have in life, you have to learn how to communicate. I want to make sure that I run a good team. You have to be able to anticipate how people are going to react. You have to be able to be considerate towards other people. I think everybody needs to have empathy uh, because everybody is in a different place in their life with different skills. There are problems that need to be solved and that is something that computers can't do as well, the complex problem solving and you know, creative problem solving as well. I think soft skills are more important today than in the history of this earth and I think they will become more valuable as time goes on because hard skills come and go. Soft skills are timeless.